Hi, my name is Ron Meyer. I'm Professor of Strategic Leadership here at TS School for Business and Society. And welcome to Meyer's Management Models, Insightful Tools to Kickstart Your Thinking. This is installment 12 in which I'd like to tell you about the Rising Star Framework. Now, that framework gives an answer to the question, which moral dangers do I face while moving up the hierarchy? Hopefully you are a rising star moving up the hierarchy in the organization. There's going to be great things coming your way, but I'd also like to warn you about six moral hazards, which it's good to at least be aware of them so that you're going to be able to turn them from a potential danger into something beneficial. So let's go through those six. It starts with a well-known one, which is called the Peter Principle, invented many years ago. Uh, and the Peter Principle is that you actually rise to your level of incompetence. If you do a good job, you're promoted. If you do a good job, you're promoted. If you then don't do a good job, you get stuck there. So you keep on rising until you're not capable of doing that job. So the faster you race up, the bigger the danger that you're going to get somewhere that you're not actually really capable of doing that. And you're going to feel lousy. And if you're really unlucky, you're going to get stuck there for 20 years feeling lousy. So the Peter Principle actually points to the opportunity to become self-aware and not move too quickly. So it's great to move up, but become aware of your abilities and only move up if you think that you're really capable of doing that next job. Now, the little brother of the Peter Principle I call the Paul Principle. And that's not only that you move up to your level of incompetence, but you actually move up so to your level of dissatisfaction, you have disappointment. Because as you move up, I think that many of us hope that we're going to become the CEO, but few of us actually reach that position. So you move up, you move up, you move up until you plateau. At that plateau, uh, you sit there for another 20 years swimming lousy because you didn't reach that top job. But of course, this is an opportunity to find meaning in something different than only moving up to higher positions. So it's not only the danger of racing up and becoming incompetent, but it's also racing up and becoming disappointed. Now let's look at not only that you're racing up, but what actually happens to say if you're higher up in the organization? Well, the third big danger is what we call the Machiavelli effect. And that's power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So as you get to higher positions in the organization, you're gonna have more power and that's actually going to give you a sense of, hey, wait a second, I can actually impose myself on others. So do you know what power does to you and what it does to your ego? It's actually an opportunity to think about, can I remain fair and can I wield my power responsibly? So again, a challenge to you. So what does power do to you? Now, at the same time, so not only do you be, uh, get powerful, but actually the higher up, the more that people can actually see you, you become further removed from people on the work floor, but they actually see you the entire time. That's why we call it the Hollywood effect. You're living in a glass house. And in that sense, you're giving an example, but potentially the worst possible example for the people around you. But of course, this is also an opportunity if you're up high to take on the responsibility and to realize that you're a role model and that actually you should even be more exemplary than when you were still a mere mortal. Now, it's not only the danger of being high up, but it's also the danger of having success. And those are the last two factors in the rising star model. If you've had a lot of success, then you should be aware of the Icarus syndrome. And that's that success actually leads to your own downfall. If you've had success, if you're right, if you're the smartest kid in the class, you get used to always being right. But the more that you believe that you're right, the more arrogant you get, the more you don't listen to others. And being right and being arrogant is going to be the start of your potential downfall. So it's really, really important to keep that humility, to keep on being able to doubt yourself and to listen to others and to realize that others are also going to be right some of the time. Now, not only do you think you're always going to be right, we also have the Hercules syndrome. And that's that you always need to be strong. You're going to feel that, well, people are looking at me, so I said, now that I'm high up in the hierarchy, I can't show any vulnerability. I can't be wrong. I always need to be right. It's not lonely at the top. You make it lonely at the top. So it's also an opportunity not to be strong and to ask help and to be vulnerable. Now, six things. Think about them. 
Maybe ask your partner, ask your friends around you whether any of these are creeping up on you. Now, what can we draw in terms of conclusions, insights from this? Well, so being a rising star is great, but there's also a downside. You have to watch up, watch out for racing up because the actual racing up itself can be dangerous. Once you get up high, so having that power and being visible can be hazardous. And having success can be hazardous. All of these great things have a dark side to them. So these dark sides, they can actually deform you, but they can also be opportunities to develop yourself if you're aware of them. Well, hopefully a useful framework to think about. Hope to see you again next month.